Welcome to another episode of Last Week's Comics Today. You're going to hear a bit from Burnt Toast later, because I have a rant to give about one of these books. But um, before then, we're going to start with The New Adventures of Superman, John Kent. And this is written by Tom Taylor. I've enjoyed him for quite a while. I think I first noticed him on Injustice, but before that I was already reading Earth 2. He did an arc after Jim's Robinson left, and some of those characters carry over into this, and it's quite nice. Um, I will be adding this to my pull list. I was reading the previous John comic, and then I gave it up. It was um, There was an arc that was heavy on Jay, and I didn't really care about Jay, and then I learned that the series was ending, and I'm like, well, I'll just bow out now. But he's back with a new one. Hopefully, Jay is in this. It's minimal. But uh, we start with the death of a Superman. These are the preview pages, so I don't think I'm spoiling anything, but you can see there, Ultraman. And he just fries but he says on to the next and that just makes me think of Magog right anybody else am I alone in this but anyway uh, we switch to I guess Earth Zero they're calling it did this one have a name no this one wasn't named so we get some John we get some Jay he looks cold and there are satellites falling out of the sky that he's trying to deal with. I don't know why everything is green. So for the next few pages, everything falling out of the sky is green, and that feels like a coloring error. Because otherwise, like, even this is weird. Like it was flatted and then never finished. I don't know what's happening. But something's happening. He's, um... You know, you can see there from his text box, you can see from the cover, he's got a different suit than what he is currently sporting. He's talking a lot to Oracle, which I think is nice, making use of her. I think, as much as I enjoy Batgirl, I think Oracle is more useful as um, a character, as a behind the scenes. Oh, she's got a dog. I didn't notice that the first time. Uh, I think Oracle is incredibly powerful as a character, and I don't think she's been used to the extent that she should be in the modern era. So, John is taking out satellites before they can hit the ground, and then Valzan shows up. And I really liked Valzan as part of the Earth 2 back in the early days of New 52. And he's not alone. I don't know if she's already been shown, but we've got Red Tornado down there as well. And there's a lot of references to previous events. We've got editor notes, which are fantastic. Thank you. I've got a complaint about something else that doesn't use editor notes. And um, it's the start of a great story. I'm intrigued. Like I said, I'll be adding this to my pull list, and I want to see where this goes. Up next, we have Predator, a new number one, which I found surprising, because I didn't think I'd added this to my pull list, but... I found it there and I bought it anyway. So this, I enjoyed well enough the first Predator arc from Ed Breeson. And this one is more about uh, a bunch of people that wake up, they find themselves in a hunting grounds and they are hunted by predators. And I don't know. The first arc was fine. I think the art was better than the writing in some regards, but um, I figured that was enough for me and that I didn't need this based on the solicitation text that, um, that I could skip this and I wound up getting the first issue anyway. And what's, uh, I guess the problem I have is it starts out like this with um, just panel one, somebody falling out of the sky, you can see that they've got a parachute there, they land, and then they're told to start running. And I've complained privately about trailers for years, and how trailers um, tend to be written in, well, not written, but edited in such a way where they often ruin 
story elements. They, they give away spoilers in a trailer and then you watch the movie and things unfold as if you haven't already been spoiled by watching a trailer. This is written similarly. So if you know anything going in, then the first half of the book is kind of just, I don't know, you're like, I already know this, can we, can we move on? Like there's, there's no surprises, but it's written as if everything is a surprise, if that makes sense. And it's, mm, I don't know. It's mildly annoying, but mostly it's time wasting. So write a book as if we already know something going into it. And then, I, I don't know, I at least will have a better time. So I got to check my pull list to see if this is on there or not, or if it was just issue one and then rectify the situation because I don't care really then we have poison ivy issue 10 I do find it funny that there is so there's a shop basically on this cover you can see a security cam there and a mirror and there's a 6.99 price tag right above the actual price I just found that amusing anyway this cover is mostly a lie uh, because what actually happens is Janet and Ivy go on a road trip, an unintended road trip. Janet talks Ivy into it, again, somewhat unintentionally, but they wind up at this retreat. You get a uh, typical California wellness slash environmentalism stuff going on. And of course, because it's a modern comic, something nefarious is going on. And uh, so we get to, well, all of these creepy faces. But what we get to is you drink the juice and, and then you get high as shit. And, and then there's, where is it? Kind of an orgy where everyone keeps their clothes on. Mostly, which is weird. Because they talk about doing things, but they don't actually show anything, and it's hard to tell how much time has elapsed, but uh, she's talking here about wild mushrooms being in the green juice, and I don't know what's happening here either, because uh, again, it seems like more time has elapsed than what they showed, and uh, then we get to... Ivy's involvement and we get all of these growths and I guess overall the initial arc when it was a six issue series was tightly written and since then it's mm, meandering a bit so I guess I don't know if the same attention that went into those first six issues is present since it has become an ongoing it feels I don't know it doesn't feel the same it doesn't feel as well written the art is still nice as long as Takara is the one um, doing it but I don't know I don't know about the story so I feel like I should drop this as a title that I'm reading but I'm not making that decision yet The Deadly Duo and this cover is not a lot. This actually happens, and it's very strange at the time. But we're up to book five of a seven-issue series. I'm thankful that it's almost over. I honestly shouldn't have read as much of this as I have, but I'm just seeing it through to the end. What, what I find interesting about this is the volume of words in this. There's a hell of a lot of reading. Let me get to a page. This is actually a really nice showdown. So, Joker's been locked up in the Bat Cave for most of the series, and then Batgirl shows up, hits him, and chains herself to him so that they can then have a fight, and it's pretty good. Go to the face. But then here we go. So this page, look at look at all that text, and this is just the beginning. And we get all of this. I mean, this panel alone. There are rules to how many words per balloon, how many balloons per page, per panel, at least. All of this? 
And ultimately, it it means that this just takes more time to read than your standard comic, which is welcome because you're paying a premium price for it. It's just uh, it's a it's a lot to go through. And then we get to this part, which is pretty wild. Um, I, I I have no idea how this is going to get resolved. You can see there, basically the cover image. You can see there. I don't know why he has this. They don't explain it. But the I was wrong about one element of the story. I'll say that, and I am very curious to see how this wraps up. Sylvester is incredibly willing to kill characters, and it's not just the main characters, I'll say, or the victims. It's also just, like, random people, because there is um, a bunch of the story is centered around this wedding that the Joker and Harley literally crash into and a bomb that goes off and killing a bunch of people at the wedding and then later they're just going through this tunnel and all of these text boxes that I showed were talking about how many people died during this too and last issue I think it was the the train that Joker was throwing people off of it's uh it's strange to me in a mainline superhero book just how many random characters are killed it's almost refreshing it's just twinged with a little bit of weird based on again i mean over here satellites falling out of the sky and of course everything you know is blown up obliterated before it hits the ground so that you know there's no collateral damage and sylvester is over here like oh yeah just hundreds of people died it's strange Batman 133, I mentioned this before, but I'm not enjoying this arc as much as I have enjoyed uh, the first Zdarsky arc, but here we see an alternate version of the Riddler, and seeing him bulked up is, I don't know, intimidating. Seeing him right on his face is a little bit like uh, Cursed, which is somehow also more menacing. But it's hard to tell how much time has elapsed because now we have a Bruce in an alternate universe that has his own bat suit. It does look cobbled together like maybe that's a bike helmet that he somehow fashioned into a full cowl and he's got, I don't know, hockey pads or something. And immediately everyone in this universe knows that he's Bruce Wayne and Batman and it's kind of hilarious that like... Even in another universe where he's supposed to be dead, he can't keep a secret. Let's close and look at the helmet. This I found very interesting. It's almost as if this, um, can't remember his name, Red, Red Mask, I think, he is maybe a Flash. I don't know. We don't know anything about that character yet. But Bruce goes to dig himself up. As the cover indicates, Alfred pulls a gun, not a sword. Bruce gives away his secret. He is executing a plan to take out some people, and all of that, I guess, is going fine, except here we get an ad for the Superior, the Zdarsky storyline. Then a bit more happens, which I just skipped over. There's a fight, but here you can get another look at the suit and how it's kind of riveted together. I mentioned the passage of time at the start of this because it's um, clearly some time has passed in Bruce's universe. Meanwhile, Tim, literally no time at all has passed. So when these two storylines come back together, it's going to be interesting to see just how much time has elapsed. Um, anyway, t Tim is in this other universe, which is run. It's taken over by Toy Man, and there you are, a bunch of... Um, I can't even see them yet. Basically, everyone in this universe is kind of a toy creation, and there are some humans that I don't remember because I'm paying very little attention to this story. And we get to an alternate version of Toy Man, who is experimenting on humans. He's called Bio Man, they call him at some point, which I do also find amusing. But 
Tim is there to take all of the humans back to their original universes, and that happens. And I don't remember if there's a continued or... Hmm. So it doesn't really say to be continued or... I don't know. I'm sure the Tim storyline isn't done yet, but I guess we're done with the Toy Man in another universe. Because everyone comes back. Everything's fine, apparently. So, I don't know. I've said this in previous videos. I've said it throughout this one. I'm just not enjoying this arc as much as I have before. I should probably drop this one too. But I'm just going to wait until the end of the arc. See how it ends. Mary Jane and Black Cat issue 4 of a 5 issue series. I think issue 3 just came out two weeks ago. And I was complaining at the time that isn't the tie-in the, the main story to which this is a tie-in already over? And the answer is yes, but they <laughs> hopefully give you a recap here in the beginning anyway, just to get you up to speed. And if things happen, this issue, unlike the previous one, so things happen and things should wrap up next issue, and that's really uh, all that there is to say about this. The writing is better, and... The art's still good. Yeah, that's about it. And then we get to Samurai Doggy issue four. Now, issue three was very delayed. Originally, issue seven was solicited for February. Now, it's March, and we're only on issue four, so there was clearly a delay between issues two and three. When issue one... Uh, uh, Issue 1 was a fantastic first issue for a new series. Issue 2 was weird because instead of the main character from Issue 1, we switched over to this character, a brand new character, and the two stories synced up by the end of Issue 2. The two characters were in the same place at the same time. Then Issue 3 was a massive fight that didn't move the story forward at all. We're now on Issue 4. The story does move forward, but in an incredibly frustrating way. So... After this massive fight that happened, we then basically get a day at the carnival for half of an issue. We get this weird segment here, which I think is my one art complaint. Is I don't I know from context, especially on the next page, what's happening, but just visually, I have no idea what this is showing. And then the complaint. Art's still great. The complaint is not the art. What happens, and you can skip to the next chapter if you don't want to be spoiled, but what happens is after an incredibly long wait, this guy is bringing the main character home, and then he gets stepped on. He's literally just a blood stain on the ground now. So, after dedicating an entire issue to this character, and then a fight that didn't really do anything for either of the main characters, and a wait of at least three extra months, he's just dead now. And I'm still waiting for the story to move forward, which it finally does at the end of this, but oh my god, I just feel like my time has been absolutely wasted. What the f***? So the robots that the fight was about with um, come back for their revenge they kill the kid needlessly and then uh, there's a much shorter fight he's told to put on headphones which I feel like is incredibly stupid if you're gonna fight why would you hinder your senses <sighs> just so dumb and yeah. I finished reading this in bed. This is what I chose to read one night. And I got to the end of it and I was just so frustrated. I was complaining to my wife and I explained the whole thing to her. And at the end of it, I said, I don't blame the writer. I don't blame the artist. The artist is doing all around great job. The writer is trying to tell their story. Who I blame is the editor for not fixing this before it ever got printed right fixing this at an earlier stage and I flipped 
to the beginning to see who was editing it, and it's Mike Martz who used to edit Batman. Like, the guy should know better how to construct a series where the audience is incredibly frustrated and just annoyed and disappointed and angry, really. Like, what an absolute waste of time this has been. I need to drop this immediately. I will check out whatever, um, especially the, the artist does next. I will check out the writer if they improve down the line. But my God, what an absolute waste. Lastly, uh, this actually came out in November. I missed it at the time and I grabbed it from the shop this week. But it is The Return of Effie Kolb. And I started reading this I'm using another non-traditional bookmark here but um already this is very relevant there's a lot of references to the crooked man who is um the focus the basis for an upcoming hellboy reboot movie so where this could benefit are text boxes since there are multiple references as i just said to previous stories specifically thus far the crooked man but there are no text boxes to be seen no additional help from dark horse regarding previous stories but uh, this is a collection of various shorts i think i have read two of these already including long night and seven wives that were one shots and uh the return is a two or three issue series and then i've got all of the rest of this that um, is new to me so i will do a video on this as soon as i can as soon as i finish reading it but um i'm glad to have this finally resolved off of my um list of things that i had missed so that is everything that i got this week and as far as pick of the week goes it is slim pickings in my opinion but i will go with john kent it is the best overall of what i think were a pretty middling week of books yep it's john kent which i pulled off the rack it wasn't even on my pull list so that is everything that i got this week as always i get all of my books from a local comic shop if you don't know where yours is, you can use this URL to find the one closest to you. Thanks for watching.